You're listening to When Christians Speak Online Talk Radio, broadcasting out of the Washington, D.C. metropolitan area. Today's voice crying out in the wilderness, prepare ye the way of the Lord. When Christians Speak is dedicated to lifting up the name of Christ Jesus and spreading the good news. All right. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. Welcome to the broadcast. This is Wood Christmas Speak Talk Radio. I'm your host, Reverend Ray. Of course, this is Friday Night Joy. Uh, I want to welcome. I haven't been here in a while. I've been playing a couple of um, um, uh, previous broadcasts on Friday. Uh, so for the, couple, the guest I had on a couple of weeks ago, um, um, you're going to say Reverend again, but uh, Veronica Burnett. Amen. Um, so we're back. Trying to get back in the groove of things. Been busy, been busy, been busy. Amen. But God is good. Amen. I want to remind you, uh, the Bread of Life will be on um, this Sunday, coming up with the first Sunday of the month. Amen. And be excited about having Reverend Robin White with us, will be with us to, to, to talk about some things and to bring the forth the Word of God. Amen. Amen. Y'all pray for the brother because the brother got a lot of stuff going on. But God is good, and I'm just glad to uh, be able to do this day. I was, um, I'm thinking earlier, I'm studying for an exam for um, insurance license, and uh, and, uh, and in between the study, I begin to think about God, you know, and I begin to think about the goodness of the Lord and where He's brought me from, and um, uh, I mean the many miracles He's He has worked in my life. And I'm look, man, I'm just. I'm just grateful, you know, uh, of, 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 of a young lady that I know, I've known for many, many years to find out that she passed away. Amen. Amen. And the thing I want to let you know is that, that sometimes, man, we just don't know when our time is up, when God calls us home, you know, and everything like that. So, we, it, it, you know, and it looks like the older we get, the more we have to be ready. We just don't know, you know. We we gotta go forth and be obedient to him and and try to um, do things um, that we're supposed to be do whatever the calling is in our life. Life is short. Life is short, man. You know, it is. Life is real short and everything. So I wanna put that out there. We're gonna talk today about praise. This is Friday Night Joy and I just wanna talk about praise if you don't mind. Um um, just for a little bit, amen. Um, I'm going to I, we'll do the announcements later and everything, all the the different broadcasts that we have that's going on. But uh, look, this is important. You know, life is short. You need to be be able to be about your father's business. If you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you need to accept him as your Lord and Savior. The Bible says, if you confess with your mouth and believe with your heart, the Bible says the same should be saved. It's just like that's that's it, you know. And then after you confess, there needs to be a place where you begin to ask the God to sanctify you know, things of the word and not the world and and that's only can be done through the Holy Spirit. Okay? That's can only be done by the Holy Spirit. You can't do it of yourself. So ask for the Holy Spirit, which is a gift, okay? It's a gift, y'all. It's a gift. You know, Jesus Christ died on the cross for all of our sins, but he said that I will send forth a comforter, you know, so that you won't, we won't be alone. And that comfort is, comforter is the Holy Spirit. So my thing is for you and for anybody else that may be listening is to, to you know, receive the Holy Spirit. And then always, whether you find a Bible believer in church, after you be converted, to say to me, you be converted, to be changed, to change your ways or turn in the opposite direction. So after you do all that, and find, and find a Bible believing church, man, that will disciple you, that will love on you, you know, that you can get healed in, that, that you can, um, you can, that you, and pray that God would develop a teachable spirit in you. I mean, all those things are important within the body of Christ. Amen. And they are needed. In this day and time, you know, do that, you know, and stuff like that. And don't be surprised at what you see in the body of Christ, okay? You go to church, and you, the, the church is a hospital. You got a bunch of sick folks in, the, in, that, in that particular hospital, you know? Jesus, Jesus is the bomb of Gilead that we need. He's the healer. He's the doctor. He's the one to bring all that comes. The rest of us, we all 
<laughs> just mud from the mud pile, as my previous pastor used to say. So why did I say I'm then this is not even a topic. Why am I saying all that? I'm saying go to, go find a Bible believing church that is filled with love that can disciple you. Yeah, don't be surprised at what you see, this is what I'm saying. Don't be surprised at what you see in there. You see all kinds of things. But the prayer becomes that when you go in there you'll see some people that's being healed. That or has been healed. You people, you'll see people that have been delivered, or people that has, you know, um, have, have have changed their life around, all because of the love of Jesus Christ. You know, the Bible says, "Forsake not the assembly of 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 of, of each other." In other words, we we need each other. It's the I need you, and you need me. It's the sharpening of our iron. You can't do it alone. You can't do it by yourself. This is not a long ranger type of uh, belief that we have in Christ Jesus. It's not. It's not me, Jesus, and that's and God, and that's it. No, it's my brothers and my sisters. You know, that's why He gave us orders to go into the, all the world. You know, and, and compel, compel them, and convince them, show them a more excellent way um, of Jesus Christ. And that's what we're doing. You know, we do this on the broadcast with the different speakers that we have that come on. That's what we're doing. You know, so my, my, my belief and my task for you today, you know, no matter where you're at, you know, if you have not accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, this is the time for you to do it now. For tomorrow is not promised to any of us. We don't know. We don't know when when our, our last trumpet was said. So, you know, we sit there, we wait for Jesus to come back. But guess what? <laughs> Everything ends with our last trumpet said, it's over. You know, when God calls up the angels, uh, God sent the angels there to call us our name or call us out by name. It's over, you know, and uh, what you haven't done or what you didn't do or maybe you didn't ask somebody for it's, it's It's too late for that now, you know. So the task for you right now, if you have someone that maybe you have offended in any kind of way, I pray that you would go and ask for their forgiveness. I pray that if you have any art in your heart, you know, maybe you're in a place of unforgiveness that you won't forgive somebody for what they did. It's time for you to put those things, let those things go and forgive them. Because Jesus says himself, he said, if you don't forgive, if you don't forgive your brother and sisters, then the for God will not forgive you. So our task is to, to do those things, to ask for forgiveness and to, you know, to seek after the things of God. Amen. I don't know why, but the, I need to put that out there. And everything, because like I said, this like this has been a, like a very busy week, many things that's going on and stuff like that. But uh, we need to know, y'all. You know, life is too short. You know, if you have a family, love on them, love on them. You know, show them love, show them uh, how much you love them and stuff like that. Treat them right. Treat your your spouse or your your spouse or your children right. You know, you know, don't do things that would uh, bring hurt or harm to them. As men is to protect, you know, you know, and to encourage. We're the priests of our house, you know. We're responsible. God will hold us responsible for those things. Amen. Let's go ahead and have prayer. Father God, we come today first to give you thank, thank you for your many blessings, thank you for your grace and your mercy, God. We just want to give you all the glory. We give this broadcast to you. Pray that you will have your way. For truly, it's all about you, God. We pray that you forgive us to any of our sins, sins of commission, of sins of omission, anything that we might have done or said, God, that was not pleasing to you, God. We lay it at the feet, at the altar of you, Jesus. Lay it at the cross, Jesus. For we know that you paid up great price. Allow us to put all our worries, all our concerns, all our doubts down, and never, ever, ever again pick them up, God, but to trust you and to believe you that you got us and you will never let us go. We do pray this prayer in Christ Jesus' name. Amen and amen and amen and amen. So, amen. Let's go ahead and get started. My topic tonight is don't let the crying rock speak to you. I know it's it's not a corny, but <laughs> that's all I got. <laughs> you know, that's all I got. So I want to come out of a scripture, and it's coming out of Luke, man, and uh, Luke chapter thirty-seven. Amen. Um, let me let me turn real quick. Let me turn it get it on my uh, computer here. Amen. But uh, man, I was looking at some things, and I, I, you know, I was thinking about. You know, sometimes we got to think about the things that we have been through, how God has brought us through and everything. And I'm, I'm a, I consider myself to be a praise or a worshiper. I, I don't, 
I don't praise God enough, you know. I don't worship God enough. And I'm being this transparent. I don't do it enough, you know, and stuff like that, you know, and stuff. Because when you, I think what it is, is that after a period of time, you go like, well, it becomes not just the same testament, because God always constantly doing something in our life. But I think what it is, is that you've told it so many times, and then you say, well, okay, I don't need to share it anymore. But that's not true. We need to constantly share the things that God is doing or doing as in present tense and future tense in our life. You know, but I don't, I don't feel like that I praise God enough for sparing my life and for for bringing me a like long way, you know, you know, and so sometimes I'm I'm, I'm saying that I I think to be need to get to place to them, we don't be uh be to get caught up in the what's the word I'm looking for, the normalcy of life, and we don't get and, and forget to give God the thanks that He's due or the praise that He's due, you know, the angels man said holy holy holy, you know, because He's God, our God is holy, He's holy. You know, the, 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 they, they said that the hallelujah is the highest form of praise. And I believe that's because we really don't have any words in the English dictionary to describe God. <laughs> you know, so the best we can say is amen and hallelujah. You know what I mean? And everything. I'm um, turning to Luke now. Luke 19. And everything. So I believe that, you know, um, that we need to just worship God. You know, and this is basically what I'm coming from. Mike's from coming from Luke chapter 19, verses 37 through 40. You know, uh, and let me let me just go ahead and read this part. This is after Jesus came to uh, uh, Jericho. They had met Zacchaeus and thing. I think we talked about that about about a month ago. But this is starting. I'm starting at verse 37, and it says, "And when he was come now, even now, at the dis- descent of the at, at the descent of the Mount of Olives." the whole multitude of disciples began to rejoice and praise God with a loud voice for all the mighty works that he had done. It said that the whole multitude of the disciples. I want to see if I can go a little, just a little bit further here. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Let me go a little bit further because there was, there was a reason why uh, he was praising. This is when he was going into the city and um, he told his disciples, "Go find a coat." And um, and, uh, 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 and let me read, let me just read this. It's, um, he's going to put it here. Luke chapter nineteen, verse twenty. Let's start there to give you some background. It says, "And it came to pass when he was coming nigh to Bethphage or Bethany at the mount called the Mount of Olives, he sent two of his disciples, saying, "Go ye into the village over against you, in which at the it, in the which at your entering ye shall find a coat tied, where yet another man set up. No man is basically no man is set upon. Okay, loose him and bring him hither. And if any man asks you, why do you loose him? Thus shall, shall you say unto him, because the Lord hath need of it. And they that went went their way and found even as he had said unto them. And as they were loose the coat, the owner they ever said unto them, why loose he the coat? And they said the Lord has need of it. <laughs> That's another story. We'll talk about that at a different time. And they, and they brought him unto Jesus, and they cast their garments upon the coat, and they sat Jesus thereon. And, he, and as he went, they spread their clothes in the way. In other words, they began to spread their clothes in the way. And this is what it says. And when he was come nigh, even now at the descent, a descent of men at the bottom of the Mount of Olives, the whole multitude of disciples began to rejoice and praise God with a loud voice, y'all, for all the mighty works they had seen, saying, Blessed be the King that cometh in the name of the Lord, peace in heaven and glory in the highest. And this was says, and some of the Pharisees from among the multitude, in other words, we're going to talk about that, said unto him, Master, rebuke thy disciples. And he said unto them, I tell you that if these shall hold their peace, the stones will immediately cry out. <laughs> and when he, and he we'll stop right there, verse 40. So the stones will immediately cry out. Y'all, immediately cry out. So if they're going to hold their peace, 
the songs that, and that's why the title is I don't want about you, but I don't want no rock crying out for me. In other words, don't let no rock cry out for you. You better praise God while you can for the things that he has done in your life, for the places that he has brought you out of and everything. Listen, one of the things I got in my note, no, it said, if, if, my, one of the things I have in my notes is that if you can't praise him in your church, and I'm someone get in trouble for this, then maybe it, it may be time for you to find another church. If you can't worship God in spirit and in truth, then it may be time for you to find another church. I'm sorry. Uh, I know you um, pastors and everything. They may be a good tithers and whatever and all that kind of stuff that may be on the day. But if you can't have the freedom to worship God and praise him, God, for the things that he's done in your life, to lift up holy hands to him, to magnify to him, to lay prostrate before him, to give him all the glory. I don't know who they are. Of the deacon board, the trustee board, all the ushers and everything should not be should not hinder your praise. See what I'm saying? Because they don't know that's they always know that your testimony. And, and let me be clear, I'm not talking about being out of order. That's a whole new set of things right now. I'm not talking about him, but because we know that God is a God of order. Okay. And then and, and we also know that going back to praises that the Bible says in Psalms twenty two and three, but thou are holy. Oh, thou that inhabits is the praise of, of the people. God inhabits our praise. Man, there's something about the praise. There's something about the worship that gets God attention, especially when we have gone through some things, especially when he's, we, we have um, um, been victorious and everything. You know, that when um, and Moses and the church of Israel came um, over the Red Sea, the Bible says that uh, they got they, uh, they, uh, Moses' sister came up with a Marian, came up with a song. Talk about them that I have given us victory, and I'm paraphrasing, over the horse and the rider. Praise for what God has done. Can nobody, should nobody muffle your praise because they don't know what you've been through. They don't know your testimony. They don't know your ups, your down. They don't know what you had to face. In fact, my thing is, is that leave them, leave that person that want to praise God, leave them alone. If they're not out of order, let them praise God. If you know what they know and been through with it, you will praise God too. In fact, the best possible thing that you can do is go and grab them by the hand and you got to, they shouting, you shouting too. Why are you shouting for what God did for them? Why? Because if God did it for them, he'll do it for you. If, if they're dancing, you're dancing too. Why? Because again, if God did it for them, then do it for you. <laughs> They're saying hallelujah and amen and you're saying in agreement because you know what God has done for them, you know, and everything. See, that's something that you have to be in a place where you see the beginning of a thing and then God allows you to see the end of a thing. And then you say, go ahead and praise him. Go ahead and worship him. Go ahead and glorify God. So ain't no, ain't nobody getting upset about this thing. Ain't nobody getting upset about your praise because you know, you know, I remember um, growing up many years ago, my family used to tell us about our, our great grandfather and um, how he was in a church and everything. And um, the church, he was, my great grandfather was, was, a, was a worshiper, was a praiser and everything. And, and on my mother's side, and they didn't, they, they didn't, Appreciate him worshiping God. And they begin to tell him, they, well, you can't do that here anymore. You're upsetting the normalcy of service. We have an order of service, and you can't do that. You can't praise God or, or shout hallelujah. And I'm, I don't know the details, all the details, but I can imagine that, that, the, that we got somebody trying to hinder or spirit, because that's basically what it boils down to, just trying to hinder your praise, trying to hinder what, what God, you glorified him, magnifying praise, magnifying God, because you know uh what he has done for you, the hapa. You know, so in other words, what he did is that obviously that was the church for him to be at. So he went down to Emporia, and I think the church is called St. James uh, Church of God in Christ. And in that church, that church, they praise the God. So he fit, he fitted right in and began to worship and to praise God. But that's what that's in with my family. Amen. The Malone family has been worshiping and praising God. 
ever since. So, so this has been a, a generational type of thing, you know, of worshipers. And, and because he wanted to worship God in spirit and in truth, he found a place where he can worship God and praise him. And, <coughs> and because of that, yeah, because of him doing that, out from out of his lines, out of his seed, became preachers and prophets and, and apostles and pastors and, and mi- 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 minister of music have been birthed for it. You know, the um, um, prophets and visionaries and, and business people, all these things have been birthed forth because of this one man decided to praise God. You know, you don't know that a lot of, you know, I say this and I'm thinking about that, that sometimes I praise, yeah, it's for right now, but it's for prayer out generation that they come, you know, so they can say, yeah, my mother, praise God, my father, praise God. I remember my mom, man, my mom was a, was a praiser, you know, <laughs> and she was shout, and, and even today, if you catch her uh, on Facebook or something like that, because they post videos on, her, on Facebook sometimes, you would begin to see her, man, she would, with a little shout, and she can't shout like she used to, but she can still move them feet. <laughs> she be standing still, you know. But I remember growing up, my mom would praise God. She would get up, up in the watching out. I want to begin to pray and begin to praise and worship. And she would cause us to get up too and everything. I remember we used to have praise and worship service and testimony service, and we began to testify about the good of God and the glory of God and, and lift this name and, and lift this name up, you know, and stuff like that to the point where people would come in, they might come in drunk. One moment, but they go leave out sober. I remember those those days that the power of God, the name of Jesus Christ, was so lifted up. It meant there could no demon or could no demonic force in that whole building stand. They had to get out. In fact, when they began to praise and to worship God and everything, and they knew that that was a spirit, they would open the front door so that that spirit can leave out of there. You know, they would open the front door so that spirit can leave out of leave out of there. Okay, it says that, and let me go back to Luke, and I got off on that. You know, it said that some of the Pharisees among them said to the master, rebuke their disciples. He said, it says, if I do that, that even the very, that have time to hold their peace, the stones will immediately cry out. You know, I don't, like, again, I don't know about you, but I don't want no rock. I don't want no stone. I don't want any of that kind of stuff crying out for me. Or crying out to praise God. They're not even living. There's no, they have no substance and everything like that. But why I got breath? The Bible says, like, let everything that has breath praise the Lord. He, he wasn't particularly, he didn't care about color. He didn't care about you, the man or the woman. But he said, let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Everything God has created, even the wind know how to praise God. You know what I'm saying? Even even the ocean and the waves know how to glorify God. The angels, of course, the, 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 the heavenlies in the heavens, the stars, they know how to manifest by God. The Bible said creation groans for the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. They know about this, the God that we serve. The animals know about God and know who he is. And they know how to glorify him. And we think about all the animals and everything underneath us. And all that, but they know, they know about God. You know, they know and they work, know how to worship God. You know, I was uh, um, I was remember being in a place where the, some of the children were uh, uh, special needs or uh, um, you know, special needs and everything, and they uh, you know they didn't really you know, did do things what we would look at and think that was normal, but even they know how to praise God, you know. They know how to. I look at a, my my one of my nieces, my great nieces, and she can't be no more, no more than about two years old. But she know how to throw her hands up there and say, "Praise God!" Man, she's probably seen the dogs do it, so she's doing imitating what she's seen. But what what we assume that, but in reality, in actuality, we don't know that, you know. But everything that has breath should be in a place where they they're praising God. Everything, you know. Everything. He said the whole multitude of disciples began to rejoice and praise God with a loud voice for all the works they had seen. In other words, they weren't quiet about praising God. They weren't panicking about it. They were doing it with a loud voice. And the other part I want to bring up that later on in the scripture it said that 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 that, um, that some of the Pharisees were among the multitude. So it wasn't just the disciples. It was a multitude of people praising God. 
you know, as they spread their clothes on her, praising God. So, of course, whenever you praise God, what I'm saying to you, the enemy will always be present. There will always be somebody to, to kind of try to shut you up or tell you it don't take all of that in a bag of chips. One of the things that I thought about when I, I – just as I'm talking, I thought about David, you know, that when he was bringing the ark back um, to to Jerusalem and everything, that the Bible said that how he praised God. God. You know, and I guess the clothing around him began to slip. It wasn't presentable. And how his wife was upset about that. You know, how his wife was upset about that. But David still continued to praise God. And finally, because she was trying to, like, you're supposed to be a king and act a kingly. This is not another word of preference. You're not acting kingly. You know, but they were like, no, I'm going to bless the Lord here. This is God did this. This was not me. Uh, yeah, I might be king, but even as a king, I need to know how to praise God. I need to worship him. We need to have that David attitude and stuff like that, you know, that no matter what that somebody is saying, there's always somebody that's going to be negative. Like, there's always going to be somebody that don't talk about that. Yes, it does. Yes, it does. We need to get to a point in our life where we pray God before the blessings come. You know, we know it's on the way. So I'm in a, in a posture, in a place of praise and worship because I know that it's coming. I know that God is going to answer my prayer. I know that my breakthrough is coming to do that. I know he's going to break these strongholds. I know he's going to break these yokes. I know he's going to bring my family back. You know, we need to get to a place where you praise God. <coughs> Praise God for your sons and your daughters. And they, and they might not be doing right right now. Maybe they might lock, be locked up in prison. Maybe they might be out there sleeping with everybody else. And I need to say, maybe they might be doing a job, but you got to see them being saved. You got to see them being delivered. So in that process of seeing that you're praying God for something that has not even happened yet, you worship God because God said, I'm going to deliver. So you worship God because you know that it's coming. It may not come tomorrow, but you know that it's coming. It may not be coming two days, but you know it's going to come and they're going to be delivered. So you're waiting you know, in anticipation. We talked about that about three months ago. And that's a patient for God to come through and bless and do exactly what he said he was going to do. My mom prayed for all her children to be saved. For years, for years, I don't know about the rest of them, but I ran like crazy. I mean, she would pray the kind of prayer, don't let them um, have, have any fun in the nightclub, or the, uh, disrupt that avenue when they go out and be hanging and doing all kinds of stuff. She used to pray that prayer. It used to bother me like crazy. That she, was, she would pray that prayer, man. But she kept on praying. All her kids are saved and know about the goodness of Jesus Christ. All of it. She will praise. She will pray and praise and worship, you know, because she believed that God was going to do it. And the same time, trust has to take place not only for your kids, but also for your family and for your husband and for your wife. The same person has to take place. We got to continue to pray, praise, and worship. We got to pray for every time we get up in the morning, pray, praise, and worship. You know, <laughs> not wait to just go to church on Sunday, but pray, praise, and worship. Every chance that we get, pray, praise, and worship. Pray, praise, and worship. We gotta do this, man. We gotta do it all the all the time. Dude. Listen, the enemy ain't taking no break. We shouldn't be taking no break either. Pray, praise, and worship. You know, be in the to the presence of the inner part of God. You know, in that secret place of the Holy Spirit. And, and when He begin to do that, He begin to talk to you, and you begin you be able to talk to Him. And y'all got a, a connection, Amen. That, that that nothing in this world will be able to separate. You know. Nothing will be able to separate it because of the connection that you have with Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Pray, praise, <laughs> and worship. You know, you know. Sometimes you do it all three at the same time. You know, you do it all three at the same time. It says, uh, you know, like I said before, my Bible says, "When someone is worshiping God in spirit and truth, don't you stop their praise because you think it don't take all that? Don't eat that other word. Don't even say a negative word." Close your mouth on it. You know, like I said earlier, go back and if you begin to think about what God has done for you, <laughs> you may be going through some things and you need to get a praise. Or he's waiting for you to come to him and to magnify him and to worship him. And then, you know, uh, the, the, and you're, the answer that you're looking might be right around the corner. You know, 
And you, so you done give it up and say, okay, well, maybe it's not going to happen. But what if you in the process of praising and glorifying God for something that has not even happened yet? You know, something that is not, and God has brought it forth as though it, it were, but you didn't know it was not. So what if you in the process, and then all of a sudden somebody knock on your door, and that what you were looking for, that blessing, that need, that deliverance, or whatever it may be, just hit you in the face and say, I'm here. <laughs> it hit you in the face and remind you, hey, I'm here. I'm right here, and I'm here to glorify him, and I'm here to magnify him. You know, I'm here to magnify him, to magnify him with all that was in me because he is good and, and God is good all the time. Amen. It is, uh, let me see. Let's read. The, I want to read. The, okay. Oh, oh, man. You know, the Bible talks about. Um, in First Peter, but he ca- um, he calls us lively stone. Let me read that. Um, and look at that. Um, and let's start at verse one. I want to read all of this. Amen. Amen. And check it out. It says, "Wherefore laying aside all malice and all guile and hypocrisies and envies and e- and all evil speaking, as newborn babies desire the sincere milk of the word, that you may grow thereby. So be have tasted the Lord is gracious." You know, those are all the reasons that we said. Some of the reasons, just some. That's a taste. The reasons we praise the God. To, who, to whom come as unto a living stone. Amen. Disallowed, and, disallowed indeed of men, but chosen of God and precious. Ye also as living stones. That's what Peter called. He said, you also are living stones. You, you, we are in the world, but not of the world. So our praise is different. You know, they, they, the world by praise and bring accolades to men, but our praise and our worship goes to God. You know, I have, I'm going to say this in a little bit. Let me finish reading this. Okay. He said, wherefore also it, it, it's contained in the scripture, behold, I lay a sign in the chief corner stone, he like precious, that he that believed not on him shall be covered. So we don't want to be a person that goes against praise and worship. You know, I, I I posted and I and I didn't get in trouble, but I had some people comment. I posted on this um, on my Facebook social media site that um, uh, and I was reposting to an ad, you know. And um, let me tell you something, you know, about President Trump. Okay, so one of the things I noticed um, before I posted that grieved me in the spirit that there were so many people that were then there was like a thousands and thousands of people that was praising President Trump that was borderline worshiping Trump, you know, President Trump. And I had, I took an issue with that. You know, whether I agree or disagree, I mean, the same thing with Obama. I didn't agree with everything President Obama did and everything like that. No more with Trump, you know. But they was worshiping um, President Trump. Or praising Trump, they were calling him their savior and all this, and it, and it grieved me in my spirit because all our praises and all our worship to be to God and God only. Okay, it should be to God and God only. God, and, and so I posted scriptures that, that, that says that thou shalt have no other God before me. And basically, what I said before the scripture, I said, be careful, people of God. And then I posted the scripture, thou shalt have no other God before me. Okay, I post a scripture. You know, I didn't expect to get no response, but you know, lady decided to respond to me, and she said that the more she said that I'm taking it. Um, there was an article about President Trump. Okay, and she said, "Well, I'm took it. I'm taking everything out of content, and I say this because I hate Trump. Hey, I hate President Trump. You know that, and um, she said some other negative things about." Him. So I responded to her, and I said to her, number one, I said, um, um, I hate no man, okay? I said, for in order for me to hate will be anti-Christ, okay? So I don't hate anyone, you know? If I hate, I'm, no, I don't hate no one. They'll be, anti, they'll be opposite of what a Christ has told us to do, to love one another, you know? Uh, love your enemies and love all the things. I'm not saying Trump is my enemy. Trump is not my enemy, okay? I already know the man. Okay. Amen. So I said to her, I don't hate anyone. And I said to her, I said that, in fact, I pray for our president 
and the leaders of this country. I said, um, um, I said, if you had read some of the, the posts that people were putting, I said, then you would have saw what I'm still saying, that some of these are borderline, if not all the way, praising and worshiping this man. I said, you know, and that's basically, and I just left it at that. I said, I don't hate no one. I said, and I did tell her, I said that you, you uh, judge and you, um, um, uh, not word misquoted, but you misunderstood what I was saying. I said, this is not about our President Trump. But if anyone, a man or whatever, began to worship or begin to praise or begin to elevate that person, uh, more so than God, yeah, I got a problem with that. And we are believers, yes, I'm going to have a problem. He is not my savior, but neither was President Obama, okay? He is not my savior. My savior is Jesus Christ and, you know, and my Lord. And that's the only one that I serve, okay? He's a man just like you. In fact, the prayer for our leaders and for President Trump and the Democrats and the Republicans, I'm going to lead about out, is that God will come into their heart and begin to soften them and to show them the ways of Jesus Christ. Okay? Not half of the way, you know, of some of some names, and everything like that. Okay? And I say all of, all of that is, is because that we're in a place right now that we should be, our worship and our praise should, should be towards God and nobody else. Should be towards God and no one else. Okay? That's why, you know, we, we 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 as believers, we're not dead, okay? Like I said, the Bible, the Bible calls us lively stones. Like Jesus, we're lively stones, you know? We're, we're, live, we're alive, you know? We are precious in the eyesight of God, you know? So our praise and our worship is not worldly in that sense, but it's to honor God. Okay, and to glorify, yeah, and I'm not saying the leadership give honor whom honors do. You know, scripture talks about you know the people that's in leadership. Of course, we should, do. but it should never honor, uh, should never take the place of praise. Okay, honor should never take the taste to uh, of or praise. Or I think I've heard that, but praise should never take the place of honor. Well, you get my point. You know, you honor men, but you. Ain't, don't praise them. You know, don't praise them before God. Don't put them on a pedestal that they're not supposed to be on and stuff like that. You know, and that's just not for the uh, president. That's for our pastors and everything that we have to be very careful, you know, because then the problem happens because they're man and they're in the flesh. When they fall down and they slip up and they, or they mess up, then we're broken because we were following them and not God. That we put them so much on a, on a pedestal that they was above us and everything. He said that when they fall down or they make a mistake, we're ready to crucify them. We're ready to crucify them and everything because they can't hold that. Listen, they can't hold that position, amen, that they're in, that they're in that, that position of that uh, posture or place that we or me, you or whoever have put them in. They can't hold, they can't stay there forever. You know, then eventually they're going to come down. You know, eventually they're going to fall. You know, and if they are in a place where they begin to lift themselves up above to eat, the, 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 drink the Kool-Aid, so to speak, <laughs> and begin to believe the hype, you know, then they definitely going to fall. Okay? They're definitely going to fall because then they're elevating themselves to be Maybe not like God, but as God with a small G. And no man or woman should ever get that kind of praise from us. We should honor, you know, we should thank them and be aware of their achievements, you know, but we should never put them upon a level where that that specific praise, that worship and everything like that goes to man, but it should always go to God. Amen. Amen. Again, the, the message there, I'm, I'm ending, y'all. That's all I have to say. But uh, don't let the crying rocks speak for you. I know, I don't like that title, but don't, you look, you know, just praise God. You know, praise God, worship him. You know, give him glory. 
The song said, give him glory. And I don't know the rest. <laughs> give him glory. For he is good and he is good all the time. Amen. Let's go ahead. Uh, Father, thank you for today. Thank you for this broadcast. We pray that it will be a blessing to your people. We look forward, God, to the day of becoming even so, coming back. Even so come, Lord Jesus. We know we live in a world, Lord Jesus, that talk, that seems like it's gone completely mad. But we trust in you, we believe in you, we love on you, we need you, and we will keep on holding on. God, there may be someone that may be going through a difficult time in their life, Lord Jesus. We pray, God, that the very peace, the essence of your peace will be upon them and shine upon them, that you will send me your minister and angels, Lord Jesus, to minister to them, no matter who they are and where they are, God, that you shower them with your love, Lord Jesus, that there be someone that have sinned and fallen short. We pray that they would know that, Jesus, you paid the price for it at the, on the cross. That every sin was nailed to the cross, God. And when you said it was finished, Jesus, it was finished for all, Lord Jesus. Then, therefore, we pray that they will understand this and receive their, receive you, Lord Jesus, into their heart, so a new life may begin, God. That the joy of the Lord uh, to them may will be restored into them, God. We pray for those, Lord Jesus, that have maybe may have other things, health things. We pray for healing in the name of Jesus. We pray that you will take the Lord Jesus. We pray for those that might be going through abuse, any kind of abuse, maybe on the verge of suicide or depression, or maybe on the verge to go and do something to something that somebody they should not be doing. We pray again, God, you will begin to put a stumbling block, a roadblock to prevent them from doing harm to themselves or anyone else, God. We pray that, Lord Jesus, you will show them a more excellent way, which is you. We thank you in advance for all these things. Continue to be a blessing to this broadcast, God. But continue, Lord Jesus, show us your way that we might please you, that we might go forward to you, that we might trust you, and that we might believe you. We do pray this prayer in Christ Jesus' name. Amen and amen and amen. Amen. All right, I want to remind everybody, listen, y'all, if y'all missed the broadcast, but Veronica Barnett on Lifeline. You got to go back and listen to that. That was an awesome broadcast. I want to remind everybody real quick, don't forget, amen, of uh, His Savannah and Grace and Mr. Dr. Williams. It's every Tuesday at 7 p.m. Declaring the finished work of Reverend Pat Randall. It's Thursday at 12 noon. Of course, this is Friday Night Joy, always on, on 7. Amen. The Bread of Life is with me this Sunday uh, at 7 p.m. This Sunday, I have Reverend Robert joining me. Talents to Change with Pastor Paul Morgan is Wednesday at 7 p.m. This man is always doing some awesome teaching. Check him out. Check out some of the, the archives of this broadcast. I'm telling you, follow, follow the lesson plan that he's doing, you would definitely be blessed. Amen. A month of broadcast, which I believe take place tomorrow. Amen. Every every uh, no, I'm sorry. Back up. Of Lifeline with Apostle Shirley Jones this first Monday of the month at 7 p.m. The Bold and Beautiful Reverend Novena Reed, Reverend Curtis Austin, Minister Jordana Cunningham. It's every second Saturday at 10 a.m. In fact, I believe that they have a broadcast on tomorrow at 10 a.m. Tune in for that, man. The dollar number is 646-478-0660. Amen. Adoration with Evangelist Lewis McElwain is every third Monday of the month uh, at 7 p.m. Then Lou, Evangelist Lewis, man, is an awesome brother. Man, he, he's another one, a good teacher, but he's also a good psalmist and resistant and all that kind of stuff. Amen. You could definitely get your worship of all of Evangelist Lewis. So I want to encourage you to check him out. Amen. Marriage Take Over the Body of One Reverend Egg and Reverend Tamika Tom. It's every third Sunday, every third second Sunday, amen. These two young dy- dynamic duo <laughs> come together, man, and they be transparent. They be giving you some, some, some. Um, I should say, Pastor Eric and Pastor Tamika. They be giving you some, some information of things that you need to hear. Pay attention, man. Okay, all right. The things that you need to hear in your marriage or in your relationship, or maybe you're about to get married, you know, seek them out, find out more about them. Okay, our three real life, real men, and real talk with myself, Elston, Pastor Elston Green, uh, um, um, other Minister Cleophas Malone, and Brother Antonio Mitchell every sun, second Sunday at 7 p.m. and and um, Pastor Tyrone Rose joins us sometimes. Listen, these brothers are off the chain. They really are, man. I mean, I feel like I ain't got to say nothing. I just sit back and let them do it with Austin and Cleophas and Antonio and Tyrone, man. They, they, and they, they're transparent, you know. 
each of these brothers got all kinds of awesome ministry that going on at um, Antonio and Cleophas, amen, and Elsa as a, as a pastor. But the other two men got awesome ministry that God is doing in their life. I'm excited about them as always, okay? Um, our weekly prayer is Midday Glory Prayer with Reverend Gwen Dixon. That's every Wednesday at 1 p.m. Uh, the dialing number is 641-715-3580. The access code is 732-499. Uh, Reverend Gwen, man, always bring for us a month of teaching and then she prays. It's only for 20 minutes. It's only for 20 minutes. You can always go back and listen to the broadcast by that and the, the number plus the code or you can go to uh, Spreaker.com and for Midday Glory Prayer. They have a have a, 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 a account just for her. You also can listen on iTunes. In fact, any of these broadcasts, you can listen on iTunes, iHeartRadio, Spreaker.com, Blog Talk Radio, uh, just uh, um, tune in. Uh, uh, I, can't, uh, uh, I can't think of the name of it. But you can listen to all these different, all different platforms, okay? Amen. So that's basically all I have for right there. I want to encourage you to go check out our website. And uh, I'll be here and check out more about us. And we still I need to update it, man. I need somebody to come forth and help me update my website. I want to completely rehaul it, you know, and to make it more user friendly. I can't do it. It's it's beyond giving me. I've done it for years, but now because it's grown and because of where it's at now, it's beyond what my capabilities are. So uh, let me know if you can do it, man. I'm just right now. Um, so take care. If you have a desire to sow a seed into the ministry or a donation, whatever you do will bless us, man. I don't care if it's five dollars, a dollar, whatever. We need your help, okay? Because we want this ministry to to move even further. Right now, we are uh, we have a listener base, listening base in over 130 different countries, if not more by now, and everything. And that's only by the grace and the mercy of God. But if you want to donate or sow a seed into the ministry, you can do so by going to WoodChristmasSpeak.com and clicking on the Donate Now button. If you would like to get in contact with me, you can get in contact with me by going to WoodChristmasSpeak at gmail.com. I do have a telephone number, but I don't think I'll post it um, in here. I think it may be on our website, okay? But you could, that's some way you can get in contact with me. I would love to hear from you. And, and um, any questions, would like to talk to any of the hosts that we got, um, send us a message. You can contact me also by going on Facebook, going to When Christmas Speak, Talk Radio, and send me a message through there or uh, through my private um, e- um, Facebook page of, when Chris, of Ray Rose, okay? And stuff. But I thank God for you. I pray that you have a rest of the a uh, 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 blessed rest of the um, after, afternoon or uh, blessed evening and uh, you know that I love you and God loves you. Amen. And you can't do a thing about it, but y'all be blessed and we'll talk later. God bless you. Amen. <laughs>